Recently, I saw a comment, it's either on Reddit or YouTube, and it was saying basically that a 4558 chip, if it's in any pedal, it's automatically a tube screamer. And they were talking about some distortion and saying how, well, it's got a 4558 in it, so it's, you know it's a tube screamer. That's completely not true at all. So let me show you what a 4558 actually is, in case you don't know. Uh, the 4558 dual operational amplifier chip, which uh, looks a lot like that or that, which are both uh, other types of dual op amps. Yeah, they do the same thing. They uh, just have a little bit of a different sound and feel to them, basically, in very layman-esque terms. But they do the same thing. So this TS9 actually has a 4558 in it, and I'm going through the breadboard and everything like that. You know, the, this is a separate distortion circuit, distortion circuit that's using 4558 chips. And um, right now my clean tone sounds like this. Okay, the TS9 knob set, well the gain's up all the way, volume and tone is straight up at noonish. Okay, let me turn that off. The distortion circuit, and it's got a bass and treble on it. I think it's around noonish or so, but you'll get the general idea that it's not anything like a TS9. Same chip though. The uh, noise you hear, that's just part of the fun of working with breadboards. All these little wires basically make like little noise antennas, so it's noisier than usual, especially when you're using gain. So, uh, but you can see two totally different types of circuits, both using 4558 chips. So, if anyone ever tells you that your pedal is a tube screamer because it has a 4558, slap around a little bit. All right, so, but the question does come in to uh, when does a clone circuit actually become a uh, unique or an original circuit? It's a good question. So let's dive into that. All right, so let's discuss basically what's going on inside of a tube screamer so then we can determine what can be changed. All right, so basically, quick block diagram, you have a buffer, buffer, you have gain and clipping. You have some filtering. You have tone control and more filtering. You have another buffer. And that goes out, out to amp. That's, that's my amplifier. Okay, so schematically, what are we gonna do here? I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. All you engineer types, if you wanna get all nerdy and talk about all the math, feel free to. I'm talking to guitar players and guys who uh, just wanna know the gist of it. So, plenty of channels out there and websites that will be glad to go in all kinds of mathematical detail for all you though, all of those who uh, like that stuff. It bores me senseless, so I'm not gonna do it. But what we have is a, this is a transistor by the way, this little sign here, that's a transistor, you know, like a, that's, that's my transistor. So we have this transistor that goes to nine volts. The sound comes in right there. Now, if we wanted to use this transistor as like to, to boost volume, 
then we'd add some resistance here and we can come out this leg and uh, life will be harmonious and awesome and it will be louder. But we're using it as a buffer. So we're gonna come out of this bottom leg right above this resistor and uh, we'll put some capacitance in there and low resistor and we're going to go into an op amp stage, okay? Now, you heard me talk about the op amp. What the op amp is, if this is your little op amp, and there's its little legs like that, that's an input of one stage, okay? That's one input. And that's another input. So these three here, part of an op amp. These three here, part of an op amp. The 4558 is a dual op amp, therefore you get two rather than one. There are op amps that only have one stage, but not the 4558. Okay, so from this first op amp stage, this pin here is the same as that, this pin here is the same as that, this pin here is the same as that. Now, we're gonna have resistance there in the form of a potentiometer, which allows you to put a knob on it and change that resistance and give you more gain. And it's soft clipping, so we're gonna put some little diodes in there. No, that's not the schematic symbol for them, but I like drawing them this way, and it's my video and I can do what I want. So we're gonna have some diodes in there. We'll also put a little capacitor in there. By the way, this thing, that just is a capacitor. So it's like drawing it, like if, that's your capacitor, that's your leg, that's your leg. Same thing, just a nerdy schematic symbol for it. Okay, so that capacitor there is also gonna shave off a little highs. Um, we're gonna bias this to a voltage. Then we can affect frequencies and amount of gain by these two parts right here. That's gonna go to half voltage as well, but the value of this resistor, this capacitor, is going to tell you what frequency you're going to, well, for the most part, it's gonna tell you like if you're gonna be base, uh, boosting bass more or starting from the mid-range and boosting more of that and on up. And uh, so if you want it a little fuzzier, you're gonna make the values in such a way that it's gonna boost more bass. Tube Screamers boosted, starts about, eh, it's around 720 hertz or so. So it's fairly mid-rangey, of course. So that's also why it's a little crunchier and not very flubby. Then, after you go out of this stage, you go into what's a, called a low-pass filter. It goes through a resistor, has a capacitor ground right after it. It uh, takes off frequencies. Being it's a low-pass, it takes off the highs. If it was a high-pass filter, actually it would be swapped, be going through a capacitor with a resistor to ground, that would be a high pass filter. So therefore it would cut off base and keep the mid-range highs, depending on the value. So after this, that's gotta go to ground, capacitor there. After this, we go into the next stage, which is the other op amp, okay? And all right, so what that looks at, it's pretty unique actually. So what this has, is resistor right there. Okay, that's, see that resistor? That's setting gain. Remember that feedback there. We have a potentiometer, which is a resistor. It looks like that. So, what that means, okay, if this is a resistor. It's got a little arrow there. That's the same thing. Make sure this is on the camera here. That's the same thing, if that's your pot, it's got three lugs on it, it's the same thing. So like that leg's that, the middle leg's the middle one, that leg's that, okay? So this is going to go to capacitor and resistor to ground, just like we did there. But this potentiometer is also tied back into the input. Pretty fancy. What that does is whenever you turn the tone control down, it gives you another low pass filter and doesn't do a whole lot on the boosting side. But yet whenever you turn it up, it uses that resistor and capacitor going to ground to, to create more gain or volume. But it's the values are situated in such is that it's gonna mainly boost highs. 
and it's not going to do as much filtering to ground because of that resistance of the pot. So, kind of a fancy little deal there. Pretty unique for the time. So, that after we go out of that op amp, we go to a volume, of course, and then we go into another buffer. Buffers for the win. And then we go out. Well, we go through the capacitor and resistor, but then we go out to the guitar amp. Let's make this one a 212. That's my knobs. Right there. And we're rocking. Like docking. So that's basically the Tube Screamer. Now, let's talk about some mods. And I need a new Sharpie to do that. Okay, some mods we can do. Well, there have been people that just get rid of the buffers. I think Love Pedal did that on the Eternity. Um, that changes the sound a little bit, takes away some of that softness, makes it a little more crunchy. Some people like that. We can also, um, you know, take this filter, get rid of this type of tone control. So let's say we're starting from here. From That's an A, by the way. So if we're starting from A, that's a whole new circuit, whole new page. Okay, so if we're starting from A, we can go to, let's say, oh, I got an idea. We'll make this a tone control and go to ground. And then we'll just make the next stage, we can just make it a buffer. We'll just remove that tone control totally, make it a buffer if we want. We can add some resistance. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't see that on that camera. Add some resistance and capacitance and increase the base, for example. We can put, uh, you know, take off some more highs in case it's a little noisy there. And um, it's another simple way you can do it. You can also get rid of these diodes and uh, I think the MXR did this. Put them right here. Put them right here. Oh yeah. Take that right straight to half voltage and now you're clipping to ground. Totally different sound. Didn't mean for that to rhyme by the way. And that's just one of the few things you can do. Now, I know that looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. The key things to this, you have a gain stage. You have another gain stage. You have millions of different things you can do. You can clip, you can clip here, sorry. You can clip here within the op amp. You can clip to ground. I've even seen Boss basically put diodes in the signal path, and I th uh, it kind of does some clipping type of stuff. Uh, can also do some gating too, depending how you set it up. But it's still a different sound. All different types of filtering is going to is going to change the way this sounds. So um, if you want to, let's let's put a different type of tone control. Let's say we do a tone control like this. This would be, I think, the blues driver tone controls like this. So here again, potentiometer. One of the sides of the potentiometer is connected to ground. I'm sorry, one of the sides of the potentiometer is connected to a capacitor, which is then connected to the ground. That can go out into the next op amp, and then we can do whatever we want. Heck, we could even clip this one if we wanted to. Or we could keep the tone control on there. And um, I said clip that one, but I, did, I drew a capacitor. That was silly. By the way, that's not the symbol for the capacitor. It's, it's, uh, it's that. But you don't even know that. I mean, it's probably not interesting to you. My point is, there's a million different things you can do. And these are all building blocks. All these different types of things. Like, there's one type of tone control. That's one type of tone control. That's another type of tone control. We could put a what they call a back sand all, which is bass and treble. Which, uh, let's see, off the top of my head, this is... Yeah. Uh, resistor, you got another potentiometer going to ground, you got capacitor there, capacitor there, 
got the potentiometer, there's your base control, and then you got a little resistance, and I'm trying to do this from my memory, and it's been a little bit. And there's your treble control, and then out goes that way. So in goes that, so there you go, bass and treble control, right within the circuit. From that point, it's not really a tube screamer because what we call the tube screamer is just simply an, two different gain stages with the cool tone control. Everything else is like run of the mill stuff that have been, has been done for years and years and years. How do you do a simple low pass filter? Like what you have after the normal stage on a tube screamer? It's very simple, uh, generally. There's several different ways to do it, but the main basic electronics 101 way to do it is go through a resistor and go through a capacitor to ground. That's a pretty simple circuit, and that's what's in a tube screamer after that first gain stage. Second gain stage is just the tone control that you roll it one way and it shifts that another low pass filter to ground. You roll it the other way and it's going to boost a bunch of highs. And then that's, that's just normal electronics the way things work. And buffers are pretty simple stuff. I mean, it's just a transistor hooked up a certain way that, uh, you know, they're made to hook up that way. So nothing groundbreaking there. So it's just, I guess what I'm trying to say here is this is all just building blocks. Um, there are people that do exact one-on-one -on -one clones. We've done a few in the past and I'm always the first to tell you if it's based off something else. Um, not really ashamed of it. I think it's, I don't know. Some people like tube screamers, some people like clones and some people like Ross compressors and yeah, there's, there's cool stuff there. There's cool things you can do within the confines of it being a clone circuit. Um, and, and there's cool things you can do within that clone circuit to make it uniquely yours. And there's totally different things you can do to make it something radically different. So, totally wasn't planning on this, but just off the top of my head, let me grab yet a different marker. Got my handy blue one this time. All right, I'm gonna use the same pieces, okay? So I'm gonna go through a buffer, because we gotta be buff. Then I'm going to, let's see, let's see here. Okay, um, re resistance and capacitance and all that stuff, right, right. Ignore this, that's just to make the op amp work. All right, so let's go, uh, we're gonna, Keep some gain here. Because this is set up as a non-inverting op amp, the way this is routed. Uh, you can also set it up to be an inverting op amp. So, uh, but that's that's one op amp, okay? This same piece is what I'm saying. So one buffer, we're going through one op amp, then let's let's clip the ground. There's our clipping, and uh, I'll pull a resistor right there. I know it's hard to see, but the plan on there being a resistor there. And then let's see, what else can we do? Let's put a resistor here. Let's make the second amp inverting. Same pieces, we're just gonna wire it different. Uh, actually, I got that drawn wrong. Because now this pin, what we normally would be going into, that's going to go to half voltage. This is now our gain stage. And there you go. Two totally different things. It's in Now it's inverting. It's going to have a different sound. Um, if we wanted to make it more like the, uh, uh, um, oh, what's it called? Like the Sir Riot or the MI Audio, I forget what it's called, or a Shred Master or a bunch of different things, cool things like that. Get rid of those diodes there. And let's see, going from memory here. So we got the non inverting into an inverting. And then that 
is going to clip to ground. That's going to clip to ground. And then uh, I think there's like a little tone control there. And then, of course, that variable resistor is going to change the, the way the low pass is working. So it changed the, the amount of highs that, that is being taken off. And then um, let's go through a buffer and out to the tone control and into the amplifier. Boom, same amount of parts just moved them around and totally radically different circuit. So there you go. I'm pretty proud of myself actually for halfway remembering all that stuff at nine o'clock at night. And I'm hungry and tired and thirsty and thinking a good cup of coffee sounds good right now actually. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, you might consider subscribing. Uh, you might consider sharing them with a friend who, uh, you know, likes guitar stuff and likes things like this. Or not. And uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys and gals in a couple days. See ya.